It's final time at the AFC Asian Cup 2019. We're 24 hours away from that big match. Japan versus Qatar in... Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Abu Dhabi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the final episode of 420 Grams for this Asian Cup. It's been a month of football, almost a fascinating month of football. Asian football. Yeah. And... Uh, Pandit, because it's an East Asia versus West Asia clash and Mr. Webhav Raghunandan had written in his piece that uh, there'll be a world of cultural cliches for Pandits to Pandit on. So we got the original Pandit to come in here and <laughs> and chat about it. But before we get you into the conversation, yeah. uh, we have John Helm who is joining us. He's going to be commentating on that final. Uh, one of the most experienced commentators, one of the most recognisable voices in football, especially for us Indian fans. He's been commentating on all the big games, uh, whether it's the World Cup, the Euros, now the Asian Championships. Even Indian football. Uh, even Indian football, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, John, just to start off with, what is the political climate that is the backdrop for this, for this final game? And will uh, the Qataris sort of be definitely the outsiders making Japan the home team in this clash? Hi Arjun, hi Siddhanth. Well, I think clearly the majority of the crowd are going to be vociferously supporting Japan, but there's been a similar scenario really for every game involving Qatar. They've got very few fans in attendance, but the players don't seem to be affected by that at all. And their coach, Felix Sanchez, for me, the best coach at the tournament, has handled everything really clever, uh, cleverly diplomatically. He's praised the generosity and warmth of the UAE's hosts, but there will be some hostility towards the team that ended home hopes. So the Samurai Blue can expect extra fan support. So, understandably, I guess a lot of people, especially uh, sports journalists, are choosing to stay away from this subject as much as possible because a lot of sorry, sort of complicated regional politics come into the picture and also... Not a region that's really well known for its human rights record and freedom yeah. of the press and all of these things. In fact, the, the Qatari journalist who we contacted, when he saw the questions that we had, the kind of discussion that we wanted to have on the final, yeah. in fact, he declined to come on the show. I know, at, I sent him, at all. We, we sent him the questions and uh, he takes a look at the questions and then he says, uh, because prior to me sending the question, he's like, yeah, let's do this. So my first question was on the political climate mm. and uh, asking if... Japan goes in as the home side and, uh, you know, uh, prompt was his reply that, I'm sorry, I would not like to be a part of this chat. Mm. I tried, I said, okay, you don't want to talk about this, let's talk about something else. I said, no, thank you, I'm sorry for this, I hope you understand. Understandable. So, just moving on from, from, from the politics of it, because it's not really a subject that we're too familiar with. Yeah. Uh, going to John, John, uh, just give us an indication of where you think this final will be won. Well, Japan have the best centre-back pairing in the in the entire Asian Cup. Their captain, uh, Maya Yoshida, has been a towering figure. And Takahiro Tomiyasu has really come on a pace. He, he's been tremendous. Uh, Qatar do have the leading goal scorer, Almoaz Ali. He's got eight, remember, which is equal the record by Ali Dai at, at any Asian Cup. So if Japan, if Japan can keep him quiet, I think the Qataris will have to find other ways of unlocking the Japanese back door. And while they're doing that, the likes of Ritsu Doan and Genki Haraguchi could be having a bit of fun at the other end of the pitch. So the other big part of this story is that the next World Cup yeah. is in Qatar. Yep, 22. 22. Uh, the roadshow has already begun. Yeah. They had a massive setup in Moscow where they were, you know, highlighting... Uh, the culture and the technology that's going into putting up their stadiums and the infrastructure that they're creating, etc., etc. Um, so let's ask John first. John, how does this sort of reaching the final of the Asian Cup, uh, playing such a big tournament just ahead of the next major one, how, how does that sort of journey look for this Qatari side, the focus on domestic players, all of, all of these new developments that are happening in the sport, how does that board for football in Qatar and what impact does it have maybe on the Middle East, West Asia in general? Well, Qatar have scored 16 goals and conceded none, which is way beyond belief, let alone their own expectations. So the development through the tournament has been exceptional. 
It shows their academy programmes bearing fruit at more senior level, I suppose. And most of the players have figured in underage tournaments and done well previously, which augurs well for 2022. I think now they can expect to put on a respectable showing at the World Cup, and that would have been unthinkable a short time ago. Any players, John, specifically that you're, you're excited to see playing this final match? Both sides. Uh, the crowds here like entertainers. They like flamboyant players who do things differently. Uh, in that event, Al Moaz Ali has scored some spectacular goals. His, his last one was an absolute beauty uh, in the game against UAE. And Abdul Karim Hassan, he really catches the eye with incredible athleticism and sort of marauding runs. And he plays up and down the left-hand touchline. The fans will love him. Uh, for the Japanese, well, they're more of a team unit. Tommy Yasu, I've mentioned, he's 20. He shows incredible maturity for that. For me, the best emerging young player in the tournament. And I think the crowds will also appreciate the all-action style of Ritsu Doan and uh, Takumi Minamino. And Gaku Shibasaki, a man who got a couple of goals against Real Madrid once in a Club World Cup final. So there are some flamboyant players. Uh, I think Japan's team, eth team ethic and discipline will probably be crucial at the end of the day. Thanks very much, John, for taking the time to join us here on 420 Grams. Uh, have a great final and, and we'll catch up with you again when you're back on the Indian football side of things. And uh, taking off from what John was saying, uh, Arjun, who are the guys you're looking at for the big final in terms of the standout players? Yeah, uh, in terms of the standout players, actually, uh, see, whenever you talk about players who are standing out, you generally talk about the goal scorers. And uh, both sides have uh, two major goal scorers. Mm -hmm. One is Al Moaz Ali, who's got uh, eight goals. And he's already uh, equaled Ali Dai's record of the 1996 Asian Cup, where he scored a maximum of eight goals. So if he gets one more, he'll be the highest ever goal scorer in one edition mm -hmm. of the Asian Cup. While at the other end, there is Osako mm -hmm. for Japan, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Osako's got six goals to his name. And uh, we were we reading about the stat as well. A crazy stat of Osako, huh? That uh, six shots on target. Six goals. Six goals, man. <laughs> talk about composure, yeah. And talk yeah. about finishing, man. Six shots on target, six goals. That is a crazy stat. And while, of course, we should be taking a, keeping a look out for the goal scorers, both teams' defences are really good, huh? Mm -hmm. Qatar, six games so far, they haven't conceded a single goal, yeah. Six games, that means three games in the group stages, right? Yeah. And three knockout games. Bhai, that is a major achievement, yeah. Absolutely. And who, you, look at the teams you're playing. You've played Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. You've played Korea Republic. Mm -hmm. You've thrashed DPR Korea, yeah. DPR Korea played the World Cup. Remember that game versus uh, Brazil where they got thrashed. But DPR Korea is not a pushover, yeah. Yeah, although they seem to be, like we were talking about this earlier in the tournament as well, they, they seem to be in some sort of... We, we never know what's really going on in North Korea because of uh, the regime there and the fact that no news really gets out. Um, they conceded 14 goals in the group stage. So 14 goals? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. they were bizarrely, hmm. given the sort of track record that they have, yeah. uh, bizarrely they were among the weakest teams at this tournament. They, I mean, conceded far more goals than you, you might have expected India to concede that many goals yeah. in a big tournament, but not... Uh, not North Korea for sure. Yeah. The other thing that, like, the important thing to bring up, like, just to contextualize Ali Dai's achievement in '96, mm. because the tournament was literally half the size of what it is now. Yeah, what it was a player he was. Yeah, Ali Twelve Dai. team yeah. tournament, and now we have a 24 team tournament. Yeah. So eight goals. More games. Yeah, that many more games and mm. and stuff like that. Not to take away from the fact that he scored eight goals in a tournament. And he scored a cracker versus the UAE that second goal. Yeah, yeah. oh cracker of a goal, bhai. What do you make of? I mean, he's one of the few non-Qatari-born players in this squad. Which this coach, who, uh, Felix Sanchez, has come in and sort of uh, rejigged the way they're looking at the sport, where they're not the imported players. The Brazilians. That was the, and such the like That, of that the was old. the traditional yeah. sort of. Or the Middle East or the old, you would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah where, where players come to play the league and then they assume nationality because. Uh, perhaps but a couple of them are still uh, non Qatari <laughs> players. Yeah. Who are still part of the squad. So, right like now. Almo is born in Sudan and, and moved to uh, Qatar at a young age. Um, what do you make of the team overall? You watched the semi final. So, I watched the uh, semi final versus the UAE. First and foremost, I think. Uh, uh, you know, what I've been saying throughout this tournament, at least from the group stages when we were following uh, India's progress, mm. 
and uh, I've been saying it since then. Ever since that game India played versus the UAE, there was a major opportunity lost, purely because this was not a good UAE side. Yeah. I know they've reached the semi-finals, but it was just a very poor UAE side, and the same was seen in the semi-final versus Qatar. Uh, Qatar was happy to sit back, let them play. Honestly speaking, and when they've been given the opportunity to let them play. they really couldn't do anything from it because their defense was so solid and very well organized the first goal that uh, qatar scored was the uae was a lucky one he was going for a cross and ball just went in the goalkeeper's direction goalkeeper didn't know what to do i don't know what i mean that was one of the funniest goals i've seen uh, mm-hmm. at this level or any level to be honest but then the second goal of almoaz ali yaar again broke on the counter this guy is a lanky guy fast takes on defenders he is not scared to take on defenders and uh, just you know he's the type of guy you give him a two three extra touches one two three fourth he's going to go for a shot he's that kind of guy so he gets that momentum as a player mm. and that's what he did in the second goal he got it outside the d went for a curler generally when you go for a curler you put curl on it you don't put power mm. this guy went for power so it was low and it curled inside mm-hmm. no chance whatsoever for the uae goalkeeper yeah. <coughs> so it looks like a well drilled side to be honest Felix Sanchez, uh, you see his reactions post all those Qatar goals. Mm. The first goal that happened, Felix Sanchez like this, quiet, wasn't saying anything. Second goal, which was a cracker goal, it got me off my seat, huh? Felix Sanchez doing this while everyone is jumping around him, he's saying easy, easy, easy. Even when the third goal was scored, when it was pretty much done and dusted, mm. he's telling everyone relax, relax, relax. You know. So here's a guy who really doesn't show too much of his emotions, if I may yeah. say, because he knows that he's got a young side, mm. and they're doing something that has not been done prior to this by any Qatari side yet. And also another stat that really works in this team's favor is that of the 16 goals they've scored, five of them, the maximum number of goals that they've scored, have come in the quarter that being 75th to the 90th minute, mm. in the last 15 minutes of the game. That tells you, obviously, about the fitness of the side. and that tells you about the fact that these guys are very well motivated bunch yeah. so they have that thing of just keep on holding back holding back but they have the energy and the power to push through even towards the last 15 minutes of a game when probably the opposition is uh, dying down a bit but however but but, uh, but because japan smooth in into japan yeah because japan is not because a uae they man the they do the same yeah and japan tactically is very very sound you know them better of course following them at the world cup yeah so i mean i better or not they've been they were my favorites to win this tournament when the tournament started yeah and we had kind of hoped in a way that the final would be this uh east asia versus west asia kind of two different styles in a way hmm. uh two different very different cultures of course so the approach to football is is a little bit different but in fact in the way these two teams are playing hmm. we find there's more similarity than there are differences yeah so both teams will be looking to essentially but i think japan is technically more sound yeah with also far more experience far I, more experience I would say as well yeah at the highest level yeah. so many of their players are in europe uh, and so many of their players are in cracking form i mean yeah three goals against iran Three goals versus Against, an Iran that didn't concede anything prior to that game. An Iran that has, like, that looked solid at the World Cup. Yeah. That, I mean, <clears throat> at a nation level, is always a dominant sort of powerful uh, side. And, like you said, they waited, they waited, they waited, and then the last quarter of the game, boom, 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 uh, final goal in the fourth minute, I think, of added on time. Yeah. so relentless in the end like absolutely so pushing well, the opposition very and clinical yeah that 6 out of 6 is the perfect indicator 6 out of 6 yeah it's like so when i was talking about qatar uh, imagine japan's, if chitri had managed to get a goal every yeah, time yeah i don't want to shot about that yeah, because honestly speaking if we would have done that uae game a little better na yaar kuch bhi ho sakta tha bhai honestly speaking but i'm not talking about india like if you take a look at japan's uh, first goal that came uh, i think around the 50th minute versus iran mm-hmm. Ball has gone towards the left flank. Now the Iranians are, of course, complaining something to the referee. Yeah, They're thinking there's an offside or something happening yeah. there. That boy goes on the flank. Osaka goes in the middle. Two players, just two players, have attacked. Huh? The Iranian goal puts a cross in. As soon as he sees the ball, so good the header. It was perfect, yeah. Perfect, perfect header. Glanced it on, 
and the goalkeeper couldn't do anything about it. Now, the one thing that really stood out for me for Japan in the Iranian game was, if you saw that game, the Iranians, and even prior to the game, Carlos Hiroj had said that physicality is our style of play, power, like you mentioned. And you could see throughout the game, they were going in for very hard tackles. Mm. So if they're clearing the ball, they were making sure that they were hitting a Japanese mm. player. They were trying to really rattle them, if you may say. Huh? Yeah. Generally, as an opposition, when it keeps on happening for 40, 45 minutes, the opposition loses their cool. Mm. So they try doing the same things. Yeah. But this Japanese team, mm. not once did they lose their cool. They would get thrown off the ball. But they have a habit, bro. But they play at this level. Pe khelte hai, like, for example, I mean, you keep going back to the World Cup because that, that is the most recent big tournament. Yeah. And one of the most fun games was the game between Japan and Senegal. Hmm. Because both teams were firstly in, in it to win, yeah. right? No fear, all of that out the window, no reputation, nothing really to bank on. Everyone looking to get as far in the tournament as possible. And this was the sort of open game, the 50-50 game which anyone could take. And, and uh, of course, Japan had a different coach in that tournament, but uh, after the game, he said like these, the power and, and the physicality of the Senegal squad, you cannot imagine. I mean, we had prepared for it, hmm. but we still got pounded, you know. But these guys, they don't quit. They don't quit. As much as you they pound them, they, yeah. they don't, they're not bothered. They still, yeah. they stick to their game plan and they, they just keep at it, keep at it. Job done, it. right? right. If, I, if I am <clears throat> playing against you mm. and I say, okay, look, this guy's a technically sound player. Mm. I'll kill him and I'll kill him. I'll kill him, I'll kill him, I'll kill him, I'll kill him, I'll kill him. As a result of that, you have a little bit of your mind. If you have a little bit of your mind, then your technicality is gone. You lost your temperament. You lose those few minutes, yeah. that's when the opposition pounces on you. But what was happening here? Whenever they were hitting them, and they were rash tackles, man. They were hard yeah. tackles. They would fall down, they would get up, and they would move on. That's it. So as a result, you know what happens? I am killing, killing, killing. The person is falling down. That's in turn affecting me only. I'm getting even more frustrated yeah, now. More frustrated. And that happened in the second half. Yeah. Iran got so frustrated, they said, send everyone. Sabko aage bhega goal dhoonne ke liye. Yaha pe unne pura open space mila. And these guys scored their goal. That is, now that is a good strategy here. Smart play. So, so in, in that aspect, I don't think the same thing will happen with Qatar. Don't think Qatar is going to come in as a very physical side. I think it's going to be a very cagey affair. Both sides are going to sit back. It is a final after all. So, it changes the scene a little bit. So, you think, I mean, Qatar don't really have the experience they that don't. In Iran, their momentum even, even has. They haven't conceded a single goal, yeah. Just, just imagine what that does to the confidence of a team, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you scored 16 goals, bhai. You're the highest scoring team in the tournament, yeah. and you haven't conceded any goals in the tournament. Yeah. Just imagine, there's an air of invincibility as a player, yeah, that you feel, and as a unit, mm -hmm. not just a player, as a unit when you haven't conceded any goals. Mm -hmm. I think more than scoring goals, not conceding a single goal, that is the standout stat. And that is the stat that says that now I feel like a superman. So, and it's a 90 minute game. Hai. It's not like you have another tournament to play. Yeah. So they can pull through for the next 90 minutes. You never know, bhai. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think support will be coming in huge numbers for Qatar. I think so. Even given the political tensions, whatever is happening over there, mm. everyone who is not an Emirati, and but from that region, will be supporting Qatar. You think? I think. And Japan, well, Japan will have a sort of decent number of spectators as well. Yeah. But but I'd imagine that somehow, I, I don't know, actually, I have no idea what's going to happen in terms of how the ticketing will be done. I, I don't even think we can comment on that because yeah. you really don't Given know. what happened in the semis, yeah. You really don't know what's going to happen, yeah. yeah. Maybe they've sold the tickets already. They'll uh, reprint a new, new bunch <laughs> and give it to a different set of people. Who knows? Uh, but irrespective of the crowd and all these other factors, uh, I think it's going to be a, a pretty fantastic end to what's been, uh, for us, a, a super tournament, a rare opportunity to watch some of the top players in the continent, yeah. you know, every day. And it's good to see a new teams set. coming through, yeah? Yeah, Vietnam. So, so, many, so many new teams. Yeah. I mean, uh, of course, we started with like the whole Indian connection and the fact that we are in, in it as well. But moving on, it's been uh, it's been quite quite fun to watch. Yeah, it has. 
it's been uh, and it's it's good it's always good to see when the favorites are not uh, making it from a neutral's point of view yeah mm. just tells you that there's more meat in the tournament uh, i thought australia was a little disappointing in this tournament uh, saudi arabia was very disappointing in this tournament which has only given rise to some new teams now qatar uh, i always feel yeah this felix sanchez thing of uh, putting a team team like they've done in an academy over a bunch of time mm. and bringing that team through mm. and keeping them together i think that is the model which india is doing somewhat with the under 16 under 17 teams yeah. i think that is the model ahead that you keep the under 16 under 17 boys together and you have the bibiano or floyd pintos together yeah. and let them be their national team coach and approach a tournament with that bunch yeah. it might not be the long term approach ki they'll serve you for 8 10 years but they could come together and come good for one tournament so say 2023 asian cup you have four more years you keep the under 16 boys together mm. and take a few players from that mm. but you keep that bunch together so you might just get a bunch of four five players who can then form the core of the national team of course you have the senior boys in char saal mein kya hoga pata nahi yaar no it's a, there's a, it's an interesting similarity that you bring up because we also are operating on a similar model where the aff has its elite academy yeah. sort of program through which many of the national team current members come from uh, we have the indian arrows project that's going on where the under 21 players are sort of together and playing the i league yeah. so so a, a similarity there of course it's a bit different in india because the fear in india is that if you do a centralized sort of academy system then you might miss out on because it's such a big country you might miss out on talent in various parts so the scouting becomes much more sort of a complicated task than an, in a small country like like qatar where i suppose anyone who wants to play football will first try to come through this aspire academy mm. in in the first place uh so we we'll wrap this up of course on the regular note which is what you expect to see from the final in terms of a uh, score line i i i don't know i can't i'm very bad with score lines but i just feel japan is going to get it yeah. you played four finals you won four finals um that tells you a lot about the team mm. and uh, i just think qatar ki thodi gaadi now will patri se nikalne wali hai don't know how much we can push through but uh, think japan but you are you going for an open game or like a 1-0 finals finals scoreline? are never finals are never open games yeah though it depends on when a goal is scored mm. so agar final ke shuruaat mein goal pad gaya then the other team is coming on you yeah and if they're coming on you they're leaving space at the back so it, it's that's very cagey that way if generally we've seen in finals that first 20 25 minutes both the oppositions are busy assessing you yeah. and seeing what's happening then after that your first goal kehte na pyada pehla chalta hai uske baad to fir uske baad dekha jayega agar beginning mein goal pad gaya to fir it could be a big one as well big score line but i don't see that happening to be honest i just think it's going to be very cagey and uh, for me japan is going to get I think the difference between perhaps Japan and any of the other teams that Qatar has faced in this tournament so far is that if you sit back and give them the room to operate they're not going to like we've said now several times yeah. they're pretty clinical. Yeah. They're not going to give you a chance to get out of that stranglehold. So I would hope that Mr Sanchez sends out his team in a positive manner and looks to get that initial momentum on his side. Mm. because i i feel like if they allow japan to settle into the game then over 90 minutes i don't think they have the quality to match japan yeah i agree i agree with you and also it's it, all those small moments na when they gain a little bit of momentum haan, wo 10 haan. minute ke spell mein kya karenge wo to aap agar shuru mein wo thoda apne aap ko thoda kuch mistake ho gaya goal mil gaya establish kar do game pe तो चांस है बट अदरवाइज आई फील लाइक जापान हैव बीन द मोस्ट कंसिस्टेंट एंड बेस्ट एडवर्टीजमेंट फॉर एशियन फुटबॉल ऑन द सॉर्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल लेवल एंड दे डिजर्व टू टेक टेक दिस टू बी क्राउंड एज द बेस्ट टीम इन एशियन जापान वेदर दे बेनर और नॉट आई स्टिल फील दे आर द बेस्ट टीम लाइक यू सेड राइट नाउ फेयर इनफ सो ऑन दैट नोट गाइस बेस्ट टीम इन एशिया मे द बेस्ट टीम इन एशिया एक्चुअली विन इट बट इफ नॉट इट विल बी अ फैंटास्टिक अचीवमेंट फॉर दिस यंग कतारी साइड लेड बाय uh the coach felix sanchez either ways we'll know at this time tomorrow what's happening and and we'll be back maybe to round that up for you uh but if not i hope you've enjoyed the asian cup 2019 as much as we have uh pandit thanks for being with us through the tournament man 
Yep, thank uh, you. A lot of fun and all the various people who've joined us, in and out, Ishfaq, uh, Renidi, all, all the guys who were in the UAE yeah, as well, yeah. Anand Tyagi, uh, so many guys came in, yeah. the journalists covering Thailand, either or say. So thank you everyone for being a part of this this little project and, and we hope to keep it going. We'll be back with more sort of Indian football action from next week onwards. So I hope you'll join us then. Thanks for watching.